Pull the ear instrument up. Pull back the trigger. One, two, three. Piercing. Pull this back. Take the front of the instrument. Turn it upside down. Put the earring in the little round silver hole. Set it in front. Slide it in. Turn it towards you. It comes right out. You line up the person's ear. Take the trigger. Pull it back. Line it up so the, the needle, the, uh, the post is right on the mark. If it's not on the mark, you can readjust it. Pierce it. It's the front and the back. Talk about this morning is why the holes close when they're infected. That you get the little what do you call lumps in your ears, that kind of stuff. We're going to talk about that in detail. If you decide to offer ear piercing in your salon, it's important that you put the certificate of accomplishment up somewhere in your service area for your clients to see. It's not a license, but it tells them you've had some formal training to safely pierce the ears. And use it as a marketing tool. This works. Tell your clients as you get to know each other. Say, look, I know you have family members and friends that have little kids. When those kids want their ears pierced, they're bringing them to the malls predominantly to get their kids' ears pierced. Tell your family members and friends the next time your kids want their ears pierced to bring them to you. Tell them at least you've had some training to do this safely, and you'll pierce their kids' ears for free if the parent gets a service from you. It's a way to get some new business. I say that works because ear piercing is popular. I said this last time. People weren't 20 holes in their ears these days. So everybody but me has their ear pierced. So. That's not true, but it sounds good. That's why I say that. But here's the deal. If you've gone into a store before to get your ear pierced, they sit you in the chair, they clean your ear, uh, they mark your ear, hopefully, with what's called a surgical marker. They remove the earrings from its package, they take the bottom of the instrument, they pull this plunger back, they take the front of the instrument, they slide the back into it, they pull them apart. They take the mount, they turn it upside down, they put the earring style into the hole or cylinder, they turn it, it comes right out. They take your ear, I guess, slide it in the front, pull the trigger back, pierce it, let go of the trigger, pull the instrument down. What this procedure is designed to do is put the front and the back of the earring through the client's ear in a sterilized process. The, the problem is what I just kind of showed you is the training that goes on in a lot of these stores that offer the service, and there is more to it than that. That's why the holes close, you guys. They, they get infected. Costume jewelry, I talked about that last time. We're going to talk about that in detail. How to get around wearing sensitive, uh, getting sensitivities to certain types of jewelry. So in a few minutes, guys, what I'm going to do is pass these kits out to you to practice. Everyone you pair should fill out a release form. Shana needs to put her name, address, telephone number on this, and sign it. When she signs the release form, this is called the responsibility clause, like your chemical services. She agrees to follow the instructions. So if they're under 18, you can still pierce their ear. It just has to be signed by the parent or guardian. So make sure, and I assume you're 18, Shannon, the guys will do. She could choose any earring she wants from this display. These earrings are called training studs. They're called that for a couple of reasons. One is they're sterilized in a gas heat. Two is they're made out of surgical steel. That's what a surgeon's scalpel is made out of when it cuts your body for surgery. It only has a trace of what's called nickel in it. Some of you guys may have heard that word before. Nickel stands for lead and copper. All jewelers use that to make metal and gold hard. Surgical steel is virtually nickel free. And if she wants her ears pierced with gold, it'll be covered with 24 karat gold. 24 karat gold is the only gold that's pure. It doesn't have any of that nickel in it. And she's got to wear these for about four weeks to form the hole. But here's where the stores fall short sometimes when they pierce a client's ears. You have to tell them for the next four months, after that four weeks, wear earrings day and night. If you don't do that, the holes can close. If they close, they don't close in the front, they close in the back first. And also tell them to wear something decent, 14 karat gold jewelry or higher, uh, during those four months. If they're like silver, sterling silver, platinum, that gets a little pricey. That little display right here, you guys can see this, I guess. These are 24 karat gold, I'm sorry, but the 24 karat gold on these earrings is what's called electroplated over surgical steel. Electroplating means they attach the gold to the steel with electricity so it doesn't come off. But here's the problem. People will take these training studs out in four weeks or so, especially the children, the kids, and they're not told about the next four months. They put in the 99 cent earrings, which I'm not making fun of, but those things are about 100% nickel. 
even if you're not sensitive at that point, if you're going to get a sensitivity, chances are that's when it's going to happen. As soon as you put those, those earrings in, the holes start to itch, they get sore, and they start swelling up on you. So it's real easy. When you're piercing your client's ear, just make sure you tell them, keep the cheaper ear, the 99 cent earrings out until after four months, not four weeks. Or Shani can do this, and we're going to get started now. She can keep the training stud in once she chooses for four months. She doesn't have to take them out for four weeks. You just have to clean them every day, which we need to talk about. Actually, what should I do before I touch Shani, you guys? Common sense. Wash, Wash your hands. Your hand. Sanitize your hands. For classroom purposes, I use this antiseptic hand wash. It's just convenient for me. You can use soap and water, you can wear gloves, but you're going to see my hands aren't going to touch the holes. We pierce the Shana's ears. The second thing you should do before each ear piercing is you should also sanitize the moving parts of the instrument. There's a difference between sanitation and sterilization. Sanitation is recommended in anything that only touches the client's skin. Sterilization is required in anything that breaks the skin. So these ear piercing studs, the style she chooses, will all be packaged like this. They're sterilized in a gas heat. These are the only things you use to pierce the ear. And the only thing you need to check for on your client, my hands are cold, I'm sorry, are for these little lumps. If you guys feel your ears, I don't know if I'm going to do that, girls, you might feel lumps or knots if you've had your ears pierced before. That's called scar tissue. If you do ear piercing, this happens a lot. People come in, they ask you to reopen their holes because they've closed previously, but they want them reopened in the exact same spot. If you feel a lump, that scar tissue, you pierce it, you break it, it gets bigger and bigger each time. So if there's a lump or not there, the holes closed on the client, just pierce directly next to it, to one side or the other. If there isn't any scar tissue, then that's okay. You can go ahead and pierce it in the same spot. But always make sure you check for that first. The most important thing is cleaning the ear. I'm going to clean off Shana's ears with alcohol before I pierce them. What alcohol does on your skin, it takes oils off your skin. What it doesn't do effectively is heal an open wound because it tends to overdry the skin. I know that's the mindset of the consumer to use alcohol to clean an open wound, but it doesn't work as effectively. So instead of alcohol, we're done. I'm going to give her this tube of ear care gel. This is an antiseptic. Antiseptics are very mild. They don't overdry the skin. If I didn't have this for her, I could still pierce ears and be okay. I just tell her to go to the drugstore and buy any type of a general antiseptic. An antibiotic kills an infection, an antiseptic prevents it. They're opposite. But either way, it works. Worst case scenario, just tell them to use soap and water. And just clean them twice a day. The only time you need to clean, once in the morning, once in the evening, the only time you need to clean them more than twice a day is if you perspire. Perspiration gets in the newly pierced holes. It tends to raise the chance of infection. And I say that because some of these stores that pierce ears, you guys, they tell you to clean them like 10 times a day. You don't want to do that because then you keep it too moist, just twice a day for the, for the four weeks. The last thing you need to tell them, you can pierce anywhere on the outside of the ear. Shannon can pierce up here if she's crazy. But if you pierce up here, let the customer know. This is called the cartilage, the gristle. This is soft bone tissue. When you pierce up here, technically, it's like breaking or chipping bone. This can definitely hurt a lot more than piercing down here, the ear lobe, that soft skin tissue. And I'll tell you guys, that can take a lot longer time to heal. I have people tell me, I'm not exaggerating, I said this last time, I'm not, and I still hear it. They, they pierce their ear in that cartilage. Some people say it takes like a year before it starts feeling better. It hurts every time they lay on it, they hit it with a telephone. So you want to make sure, you know, you let them know. So, which one do you want? <laughs> <laughs> Turquoise? I'm sure I have that. Any questions, by the way, girls, if you guys, if you have any questions, don't be shy, you guys. Raise your hands. If I can, I'll try and answer them for you as we... Um... And by the way, I'm going to mark her ears off. I forgot to show you guys this. This is important. Only with this surgical marker. This comes in the kits. It's made out of vegetable oil. People tell me they get their ears marked. They have them pierced in some of these stores. This may have happened to some of you guys. With pens, magic markers, um, sharpies. Sharp. Thank you, sharpies. That's dangerous because some of those things have lead in the end. If you get lead in your bloodstream, you can get lead poisoning. So only use the surgical marker. Who do you say this is made of? The surgical steel. Surgical oh, okay. steel. And it's what, 24 if she wants to go. Third hole? Um, can you do this one like right, right below, below it? Sure. Yeah. Cartilage, right? Yeah. Both sides? If you do both sides and the cartilage goes, you sleep like a mummy, just let you know. So, let me see. 
And she can look in the mirror. Oh, so like you're crazy. Too so I like it. It's too late. I already marked it. <laughs> <laughs> so I had that one in the industrial done in the same day, so I can handle two cards. Okay, cool. Okay, I think we take a look. Um, the other thing is, any questions, by the way, girls? Okay, the other thing is, I'm going to my when she chose the earring for the little display uh, thing right here, they come in three different sizes you can pierce with. They come in a large size, a regular, and a mini size. So the instruments have these little adapters in them to fit the different sizes. And they have these little clips you can use to change them. You take this clip. Oh, which one do you want? Here's um, one. Slide this in here. Pull back the plunger. I get that big one. It's about, you don't mind gold, do you? And this is set to go for a large size earring. There's one for a regular size and then a mini size. We're going to use the regular size earring. So I put the regular size clip in. I pull the trigger back. It's ready to load. Or if you want, you can change these with your fingers. Pull the plunger back. You can re uh, exchange it with your fingers. If you use your fingers to change the adapter, what should you do to the instrument? What's that called? Remember? Sanitize. Sanitize it. Now, the other thing that can cause an infection, it's actually the person that's piercing your ear. When they open these packages and they remove the sterilized earrings, what they'll do is they'll touch one or both of the little points that stick out the back. You guys, if you touch the points, the earrings are no longer sterile. You can touch the backs or the heads of the studs, but not the points. You can't sterilize your hands if you're worried about that. Gloves is technically not considered sterilization. So be careful that you don't touch the points. And when you load the instrument, you guys are going to do this in a minute. I'm going to pass these out to practice. Hold the instrument level straight across. Take the front of the instrument, slide the back into the front, straight up and down until it stops. Pull them apart from each other. Take the mount, turn it upside down. Put the earring style into the little adapter we just changed. Slide it in, turn it towards you. It comes right out. And then the ear piercing kits come with this ear care gel. This is an option. You don't have to use this, but I think you should because it works. This also has some aloe vera oil in it. I'm going to take a little bit of this and put it along the earring post without touching the post. So as the earring goes through the ear, it soothes it. And then right after I pierce it, I'm going to put a few drops of this ear care solution on. This is good stuff. This has benzoconium chloride in it. This gets into the hole. It will soothe it completely. And you guys will see that. So... I hope. It didn't work yesterday when I used it, so. <laughs> <laughs> All I'm going to do is take the side of uh, Shina's ear, pull the ear, instrument up, pull back the trigger. One, two, three. Pierce the ear, pull the gun straight down. <laughs> I felt nothing. One more time. <laughs> I put a few drops of this on, though. This should make it feel better. That better? Ow! <laughs> say yes, say yes. Come on. <laughs> <laughs> I'm kidding around, but it is good for little kids. I'll tell you, I know I keep promoting that, and you will get business piercing your clients' friends' kids because you can promote your services to their families, but they're not easy. These little kids, you pierce one or you're chasing that kid around the store. This makes it a little bit easier, you know, uh, when you're piercing ears. And also babies' ears, too. I forgot to mention this. Um, newborn babies, especially in beauty salons, girls, I'm going to stereotype, but women go into salons. If they know you do ear piercing, some of them are going to ask you to pierce their newborns. They want to get that over with. Before you do that, always ask the parent if the baby has had their tetanus shot. When a baby's born, it has its mother's immunities. But as the baby gets older, four or five weeks old, they wear down. I believe it's eight weeks they have to have what's called a DPT shot. It stands for diphtheria pertussis uh, tetanus. So make sure they've had that. Let me see. Make sure they're even. Okay. Got brand new glasses in a work as well. So. <laughs> pull the ear, pistola up, one, two, three. Pierce the ear, pull the gun down. Second one hurts more. I forgot to tell her that. That's a joke. <laughs> I'm going to give the gel to Shana. How many times a day should she use this, guys? Remember? Twice. Twice a day. You're alive. That's a good sign. Cool. Thank you. You're welcome. <laughs> Any questions? I just mentioned babies a second ago. I don't know if I said this last time, but as long as those babies keep being born, this does not go away. Your person does not go away. What I find, it's kind of recession-proof because that little girl, now a little boy that wants to get their ear pierced for the first time, they're going to get it done. The parents generally bring them to the malls, like we talked about earlier, and the parents don't mind spending $20, $30 to get their kids' ears pierced for the first time because it's a one-time event. It's not an ongoing thing. 
If you do this in the salon, you got to put the signs up, put the certificate up. You have to have a program. You ask those people in your chair if they have brothers and sisters that are married with kids. Most of them are going to tell you they do. And when those kids want their ears pierced, they're bringing them to the malls. You got to get them to bring them to you because that's an opportunity to promote your other well, service. It will come to California. That's why we brought in these little uh, uh, nose rings. But um, it's not in California yet. Right now, the release form only covers the ear. My opinion, it's going to be coming here. Now, I will say this. I said this last time, I think. We've had salon. We have salons. They've been doing nose piercing for years. You have to use the mini earring, and you don't put the back in. The client's got to go out the next day and buy the little nose ring to replace it. The nose is the exact same material as up here. It's Carly. Exactly. Carly. It's the exact same material. So it's going to hurt more. But if you do that, the release form does not protect you. Stay on the, uh, if you stay on the ear, you're protected. If you say anything off the ear like that, at this point anyway, you're not protected. So that's a good question. But um, yeah, at some point it is going to come here. So what states was it okay? Pennsylvania and Arizona. Thank you. That I know of. There may be some more since uh, I was informed about it, but um, it's probably going to come here. The reason for that, girls, guys, is I, I believe anyway, it's the blood issue. Um, body piercing, and that's fine, but when, a, um, when the ear piercing instrument pierces the ear, it's kind of like piercing a balloon that never bursts. That training stud goes through the ear, the skin tissue wraps around the earring pulse, it seals itself immediately. Some of you guys, I'm sure, have had body parts pierced. They'll take a needle that's hollow in the center, they push it through the body part you want pierced, it removes a small layer of skin, and then they immediately replace it with the tongue ring, the navel ring. The ring they replace it with, if the post is too small for the hole they just made with that hollow needle, the skin doesn't seal around it. When it doesn't seal, that's when it bleeds. So nothing wrong with body piercing. I'm not throwing that under the bus. We now, Aesthetics now sells the needles. I've been doing it for a few years. Uh, I am not allowed to show needles in a beauty school or a beauty salon. That, they'll shoot me if I do that. No, you're not allowed to do body You can do ear piercing, but not body piercing. So um, anyway... I don't want to dwell on that, but yeah, um, but that's um, you know it is what it is. So, but that's I believe why they put the nose with the instruments to avoid the blood issue. If you're not doing that right, you got to be careful with that. Go ahead, you don't sorry. recommend doing the trachea. Yeah, you do the trachus. I don't pierce the trachus. You guys sort of pointing at right here. There's nerve endings. It's cartilage. It's got to hurt, but there's nerve endings that go through it. If you hit one of them, I think it's from your trifacial nerve, I believe. If you hit one of those nerve endings, it kind of numbs your cheek. It's temporary. You're not going to die or anything, girls. But anywhere on the outside, you don't have to worry about any of those nerve endings, which is which is good. So, somebody else have a question? That was the question. Right? Oh yeah, <laughs> and, and I'll tell you, that is a good question because that's popular. You have to use the mini earring. Same thing with the car, with the uh, tray because you can't use the big one; it's too big. But um, yeah, that's um, yeah, that's popular. There's no doubt about it. So, take everything out of the packages. Take the instrument out, the earrings out, and the foam ear. First thing you want to do, watch me. Watch me. Point the instrument toward the ceiling. On the bottom of the instrument, there's a silver knob here. Don't turn it. Pull it back real hard till it clicks into place. Real hard till it clicks into place. And then hold the instrument level straight across like this. The earrings are on these little mounts. Hold them with your thumb on one side, your finger on the other. The flat back piece should be on the bottom. The round gold ball piece should be on the top. Take the very front of the instrument where I'm putting my finger, there's a little slot, it's called a clasp retainer. You take the clasp retainer and you set it underneath the flat back, very gently, it has to be straight up and down, slide it in until it stops, just like this, and then pull them apart from each other. Hold the instrument level, straight across like this. Take the little mount, turn the mount upside down so the gold ball is on the bottom. Hold it from the sides like this, if you can, with your two fingers. Now, will you just put that little back piece a second ago, about an inch to the right of it, where I'm putting my fingernail, there's a little round silver hole. It has a little beige ring around it, I guess. Take the gold ball, set it in front of the silver hole, slide the gold ball in the little silver hole, and the little mount you're holding with your two fingers, watch me, girls, turn it toward you. It comes right out. Slide in and turn it, turn it toward you. I will take the, the foam ear, not your ear, guys, the foam ear, <laughs> slide it in front of the little pointed post. The silver thing sticking down is the trigger. Take the trigger, pull it back, and pierce it. And then pull the gun straight down. See, so it puts the foot in the back. Go do the other one or show the person sitting next to you.